All right, next up, let's take a look at some calculations we can do involving uh, electrolytic cells. We'll also be able to apply this later to galvanic cells. Uh, let's start with counting electrons. There's this unit of measure called the Faraday. Uh, Faraday uh, is basically the charge carried by one mole of electrons. So if you have one mole of electrons being gained by something or one mole of electrons being lost by something, the charge of those mole of electrons uh, we call a Faraday. Now, uh, a Faraday, in terms of charge, is 96,500 coulombs. So coulomb is a unit of charge. 96,500 coulombs uh, per mole of electrons. That's one Faraday. So uh, this is known as Faraday's constant. You're given this value on your equation sheet, so no need to memorize it. But anytime we want to convert between charge and moles of electrons, we'll use Faraday's constant. Uh, current is a property of electricity. It uh, refers to how fast electricity is flowing. And the unit for charge is called an ampere or an amp. So an amp is one coulomb per second. So again, we have a relationship here that we can use as a conversion factor between charge and time, say that uh, an electrolytic uh, cell is being has been operated. So let's take a look at 21.1 on 798. It says calculate the mass of copper metal produced at the cathode. So be thinking about what process occurs at the cathode. During the passage of 2.50 amperes of current through a solution of copper 2 sulfate for 50 minutes. All right, so we're given the current and we're given the time that we pass this current through the solution. Uh, anytime you're given current and time, we can use those to find charge. So we're going to start with the time on the outside. We'll start with that. So I'm going to write that down here. So we have 50 minutes. And remember, a amp is a coulomb per second. So we want to convert that to seconds. And then we're going to use the current as a conversion factor. So we have 2.50 coulombs per second. So notice what I did there. Instead of uh, writing amps, I wrote it as coulombs per second. Uh, we can get the total charge, which we, you can then use. Um, your book separates it into two steps. I'm not sure why. But now that we have charge, we can convert that to electrons using Faraday's constant, 96,500 coulombs per mole of electrons. Let's cancel as we go just to make sure we keep track of the units here. we got a lot going on. All right, so now keep in mind, where did the copper metal come from? So it said copper metal was produced at the cathode, and we're running electricity through a copper 2 sulfate solution. So let's take a look at our balanced redox, or reduction rather, half reaction. So for every uh, one mole of copper metal that's produced, uh, the copper 2 ions need to gain two moles of electrons. So let's convert from moles of electrons to moles of copper. We can do this copper metal or copper two. So moles of electrons cancel. And then from there, we can go to grams of copper. So again, given the current, given the time, we can use those to find charge. We can convert from charge to moles of electrons using Faraday's constants. And then we need to look at how many electrons are being gained or lost, depending if it's a reduction or oxidation half reaction, and then solve from there. So we get an uh, answer ultimately of 2.47 grams of copper that will be produced at the cathode. All right, a chance for you to practice now. Similar type problem, go ahead and do number 25 on page 834. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, here's a setup for that one. Again, we have uh, platinum two ions being reduced to platinum metal. So be careful with the number of moles of electrons. So two moles of electrons gained for every one mole uh, platinum metal that forms. Ultimately, we get 0 0.0595 grams. Take a look at 31. It's a little different problem. Let me walk you through it a bit. So we have some ions in solution. Uh, iron 3 ions to be exact in solution. Uh, we start off with a certain amount 
And then we pass an electric current through that solution, uh, producing some iron metal. And so this time we don't want to know how much iron metal is produced, but how much the concentration of the iron uh, decreases by. Like what is the concentration of the iron after running uh, the current through the solution for that long? So if you start off with calculating how much total iron-3 ions are in solution, and then we can apply what we just did to calculate moles of iron-3 that are reduced, and then the difference is what will be left in solution. Go ahead and pause the video and work that out. Right, so here's the setup. We started off with uh, 50 milliliters of a 0.152 molar solution of iron-3 chloride which we can then use to find moles of iron-3 that we start off with. This is total moles of iron-3. And then we can figure out how much uh, iron-3 is reduced, how much reacts. Uh, that is uh, used to produce the iron metal. So the electric current is run for 20 minutes. So let's convert that to seconds. Our current is 0 0.620 amps or 0 0.620 coulombs per second. Uh, convert that to moles of electrons using Faraday's constant, and then three moles of electrons gained for every uh, one mole of iron three that is reduced. So the difference between those will give us moles that is left in solution. Take that again, divided by our 50 milliliters, and we get the concentration uh, 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.101 molar. All right, next up, take a look at 21.2 on page 799. Uh, this time it says what volume of oxygen gas measured at STP is produced by the oxidation of water at the anode of the electrolysis of copper 2 sulfate in example 21.1. So now remember we talked about uh, electrolysis of an aqueous solution. Sometimes the water is oxidized and when the water is oxidized you produce uh, hydrogen ions along with oxygen and some electrons. Now this equation is not balanced, so make sure you go to your um, table of reduction potentials and look at the balance equation. It's also given to you there uh, in the solution. So this time uh, we're trying to find how much oxygen is produced. If we find uh, moles of oxygen that is produced, then we can use uh, standard molar volume of a gas at STP to convert to volume. So same process, uh, we're given the time, we're given the charge, so 50 minutes, 2.50 amps, this is from example 21.1. Uh, convert to moles of electrons using Faraday's constant. And then we notice from the balance equation, I didn't balance it here, but if we balance it, we get this. Uh, there are four, four moles of electrons lost for every one mole of oxygen gas that is produced, and then convert that to liters using standard molar volume of a gas. So we can always get to moles uh, using these conversion factors and then use that to answer the question. In this case, uh, liters, uh, prior uh, questions, it was grams. All right, lastly, electroplating. Uh, we can use electrolysis uh, to plate one metal onto another. So we see uh, the in the margin on the top of page 799, uh, we have some shoes that have been electroplated with copper. So uh, again, it's just uh, electroplating is a process where you use electricity and uh, this idea of taking ions in solution, reducing them to make a metal, and then you can cause that metal to stick to other surfaces. All right, so that concludes this lesson. Next time we'll be talking about galvanic cells. Thanks for watching.